Hi guys, uh, we're looking at text and test four, page eighty, exercise uh, two point nine. Uh, we're going to start off with question two. Uh, question two asks us to show that uh, x minus one is a factor of x cubed minus x squared minus nine x plus nine. So is a factor of means divide into easy, evenly. So for example. Uh, 2 is a factor of 8 because it gives a whole number answer. 2 is not a factor of 9 because it gives, uh, it does not give a whole number answer. So one of the things you can do is check, well, does x minus 1 divide into x cubed minus x squared minus 9x plus 9? And using um, whatever method of long division you like, I'm going to use the array here. We can check that to get an x cubed here and an x cubed here, which means when we multiplied this, there must have been an x squared up there and a minus x squared down here. Uh, now minus x squared is what we wanted, so that has to be a zero, which means there must have been a zero up here, uh, and a zero down here. And we want a minus nine x here, that means minus nine x must have come out of this box, plus zero x minus nine x, and then that gives us a minus nine up here, minus nine times x got us a minus nine x, minus nine times plus, minus one, plus nine as required, so yes, uh, x minus 1 is a factor. Now, a shorter way of doing the same thing, and when you're doing your work tonight, you can stick with the shorter way, is by using something called the factor theorem that we're going to meet in just a second. Well, actually, well, we'll do it now. Uh, it says, if a function uh, is evaluated at some point k is equal to 0, then x minus k is a factor. Okay, so for here, we've got x minus 1 is a factor which would suggest k is 1. So if we plug in 1 into our function, we should get 0 as an answer, according to the factor theorem. So x minus 1 is a factor, therefore we say x equals 1 is a root, and let's plug that in over here, f of 1. Okay, to check, is it a factor, we say, well, do we get 0 as an answer? Uh, and that gives us 1, take away 1, take away 9, plus 9 which is zero. Therefore, x equals one is a root, and x minus one is a factor. Okay, so that's maybe a faster way of doing question two. So these are two separate methods, both of them equally valid um, using the factor theorem. So just to give the formal expression to the factor theorem, it's there on page 78 in the textbook. Um, if a function such as this one, Okay, if a function evaluated at some value k, so we evaluated at 1 here and saw that we got 0 as an answer. If you evaluate it at k and get 0 as an answer, then x minus k is a factor of the original function. Okay, uh, conversely, so converse means switch the if and the then statements. So instead of if this, we say if x minus k is a factor of f of x, then f of k, when you plug in whatever that number is, k, uh, you should get zero as an answer. Okay, and a similar uh, point in the factor theorem is if a x minus k is a factor. So if there's some number in front of that x, well then um, it's k divided by a is what you plug into the function that would give zero as an answer. And just notice that sign change with each step. Uh, it's x minus k in the factor form, but k is the root. Ax minus k here is the factor, plus k over a is the root. Over here, x minus 1 is the factor, x plus 1 is the root. Okay, so question 7 says, uh, investigate if 2x plus 1 is a factor of 2x cubed minus x squared minus 5x minus 2. Okay, so what we want to say is, well, if 2x minus 1 is a factor, uh, 2x plus 1, sorry, is a factor. One of the tricks I use is let it equal 0. So over here, if you'd said x minus 1 equals 0, you would have gotten x equals 1 as a solution. Okay, so here 2x plus 1 equals 0. 2x is minus 1. x is minus a half. So if 2x plus 1 is a factor, then minus a half will be a root. Okay, so you can see here k is 1, 
a is 2, 1 over 2 is what we've ended up with, and we've changed the sign to a minus. Uh, so let's see if that works. If we plug minus a half in here, do we get 0 as an answer? Uh, well, that's 2 times minus 1 over 8, minus, uh, that's minus half by minus a half is plus a quarter. This was minus half by minus half by minus a half, so we ended up with a negative answer. Uh, minus 5 by minus half is plus 5 over 2, minus 2. So what's that? That is minus a quarter, okay, 2 eighths is 1 quarter, minus 1 quarter, minus another quarter, plus, I'm going to call that 10 quarters, and that's minus 8 quarters. So that's 10, take away 8, take away 1, take away 1, that gives 0. So is 2x plus 1 a factor? Yes, because evaluating this at x equals minus a half gave us zero. So yes, 2x plus 1 is a factor for question 7. Uh, question 12 asks you to factorize uh, this expression. And it doesn't give you any more details. So uh, to factorize, this is called a polynomial. It's an order 3 polynomial because it's a, a, a cubic. Uh, the highest power of x is 3. Uh, the first thing we need to do is work out, well, one of the factors. And to do that, we'll have to find one of the roots. Um, and we do that by trial and error, which sounds like it's going to take a long time. Okay, you're going to plug random numbers in here into this function until you get zero as an answer. However, we do have a little bit of a shortcut because the only options are factors of this last number in the polynomial, factors of four. So our only options are one, two, four, minus one, minus two, minus four. Okay. So worst comes to the worst, we're going to have to do this six times, but we won't even have to do that. We'll try it with one. I'll do this in red. Plug one into the function. We'll plug um, two into the function. And we'll plug four into the function. Okay, so one cubed is one. I left myself a little short on space here. Uh, I'll just do this over here. One cubed is one. Take away four times one squared is just take away four minus one and then plus four okay well that straight away uh four take away four one take away one that's zero so we already know that one is a root and therefore x minus one is a factor okay so we can say x equals one is a root and x minus one is a factor by our factor theorem that we've just met so uh we can ignore all of this work here okay um if you want to do it you can uh, but we won't. Uh, cubic equations, uh, whatever the order of the polynomial is, that's how many roots it has. So this cubic will have three different roots when we're finished. We, uh, sorry, three different, well, roots and three different factors. So we worked out already that x minus 1 is one of the factors, um, because if you plug x in, you get 0 as an answer. So uh, we can now say, well, if x minus 1 is a factor, we can divide it in. So divide it in, what do we get? Well, x uh, by x squared gets us that x cubed that we're looking for and that gives us a minus x squared down here we want minus 4x squared so there had to have been a minus 3x squared here uh, and then we say well x by minus 3x would have gotten us that minus 3x squared and left us with a minus 3x oh sorry a plus 3x minus by minus down here we wanted a minus x so we need 3x take away 4x gets us that minus x, which means there must have been a negative 4 up here, and that is a plus 4 as required, okay? So they've asked us to factorize x cubed minus 4x squared minus x plus 4, and we've said, well, you can write it as x minus 1, which is one of the factors, and this thing here, x squared minus 3x minus 4, is another factor. Now that's not fully factorized because you just need to factorize the quadratic part there as well. So that's going to be x minus 1 multiplied by, there's two other factors in there, okay? So it's x and x to get x squared. Uh, it has to be 4 and 1 to get 4. Um, when you multiply, when you add them, you want minus 3. So that's minus 4 plus 1. You multiply them, you get minus 4. Add them, you get minus 3. And there's the whole thing factorized, okay? x cubed minus 4x squared minus x plus 4 um, is the same as x minus 1 
times x plus 1 times x minus 4. And if you were asked for the three roots, they are x equals 1 based on this, x equals minus 1 based on this, and x equals 4 based on this. And later on you might be asked to sketch these. Cubic functions always have this kind of a look. And the roots are where they cross the x-axis. So we can say this is going to cross at minus 1, 1, and 4. Okay, so maybe I haven't done a perfect diagram there, but it's something like that. Um, and we're also going to have a y-intercept up here uh, based on, as usual, the last number in the polynomial is 4. So if you were asked to sketch it, that's what it looks like. Minus 1, 1, 4. Um, but that's what we were asked to do in this question, factorize fully. Now, I'm going to ask you now to do, on page 80 and 81, questions 1, 3, 6, and 10. Uh, in class, we're going to carry on with 4, 5, 8, 9, 11, and finish off question 12. There's five more parts to it. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.